to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you. Tuesday, June 2nd, the UDK is here, mm. very excited about that. From from what I hear, the, <laughs> the people love it. Are you, you're hearing good things? I'm hearing good things about yes. the Ultimate Draft. Yes, congratulations, footballers team, it's been a long, what, four or five months, yeah. as it always is, to build this thing out. It's always it feels good when people are getting access to it and enjoying it and mm-hmm. um uh excited to have it out there always changing updating it's a fun product and uh you know a dollar from every UDK goes to St. Jude Children's Hospital once again this year so we've partnered with them again hope you're enjoying it ultimatedraftkit.com for that you can find the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers um Got a good show for you today. We're doing an ADP price check. Brooks has got it all set up for us. We're going to walk through the a number of players, take our shot at where we think they're going in the draft and see if they're going too high, too low. Uh, I did want to take a brief moment, um, an important moment, as we come into another week of talking about sweet, sweet fantasy football, which we love. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would love nothing more than to come in here and sell some sweet UDKs. And I know on this show, and we've heard from many of you, like we pride ourselves on being that distraction and that lighter touch, that respite from what is going on in this world. But, uh, you know, we were here talking with one another and we feel like Not acknowledging what is taking place in this world is in and of itself a bit of a statement on what's happening in this world. And so I wanted to say, just share how incredibly burdened our team is with what is transpiring in this country right now. Um, My daughter is five years old. She is black. This is not the world that I want for my daughter. Uh, It's not the world that any of us want our children growing up in. Uh, It breaks our heart. Um, And so what I can say is that uh, to the thousands of of black listeners and supporters of this show that are tuning into the podcast, uh, I simply want to say this. Uh, I want you to know that we know that this is not okay, that what happened to George Floyd is not okay, and what has been happening for years is not okay. And, um, you know, it's important to me and to us that that you hear that from us and that you know that. It's... Our our hearts have have uh, truly been broken this last week, and they and they really do go out to to everyone listening, everyone going through this. You know, the three of us will will never truly, uh, fully understand, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't excuse, yeah, yeah ignoring yeah. problems. And it's like we we have a voice. Uh, I have an online voice, and I wrote, I deleted. <laughs> 20 plus messages this weekend because every time I thought I knew what I needed to say, I would read back. I'd say, this is, this is garbage. Like this is not, this doesn't work. This isn't expressing what I need to express right now that we need to do better. I need to do better and I can do better and we can do better. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to educate myself. I want, my family educated. I want my friends educated. So, I mean, we, my wife and I spent the whole weekend crying, trying to learn. So that's, I, that's the, the thing that I guess I just, I want to say is I can do better. 
I'm going to do better. All right. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Seamless transition. Seamless transition. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I posted a meme yesterday. It's not refreshing your news feed is uh, in 2020. You just don't know what's going to be there <laughs> next time. You, now, yeah, we, did, we did send some people to space. That we one, did. Which was awesome. Yeah. The luckiest two people <laughs> on the face of the earth. Or no not longer. on the face of no the earth. No longer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, that's pretty cool, though. That's pretty special. It, that was that was a, another. I mean, that comp. It was. I'm sure it was compounded. The emotion. More, more of that. tears were coming. Oh d- yeah, definitely. And I I knew what like watching it. I was getting emotional, welling up. I know I was also heavily impacted by feeling everything. Uh, yes, we're all, all feeling the, everything right now. Yeah, but it it was it was a very special moment as someone who has been a space enthusiast my entire life. It was very cool. It was it was cool as well to, uh, for family. Like uh, all these families who yeah, were actually together and able to see it together, I, I saw them saying it was like the most viewed uh, NASA event in history, mm. which is crazy. That's amazing. And now they have technology to actually like like great cameras and great ability to cover what's going on. It's it's pretty neat. Yep. All right, we're gonna take a look at some uh, best ball ADP, some players. Uh, we're gonna start with Michael Gallup. Too low. <laughs> Well, I don't even know what it is. Yeah, right now we have him at the consensus number 32 overall wide receiver. Uh, where do you think he is going in drafts compared to where we have him? Mm. And uh, Michael Gallup is, is kind of, it's a, it's a great discussion because of what they did with CeeDee Lamb, knowing Amari Cooper's paid. Michael Gallup sits here as this, uh, you know, second option, but... It's complicated in Dallas. It, it is definitely complicated, but when things are complicated, I choose. I'm, I'm going to look at the facts that I know. Amari Cooper is a good wide receiver. He comes and goes sometimes. Uh, CeeDee Lamb was drafted to be a great wide receiver. I'm projecting he's going to be a great wide receiver. Went in the first round, high draft capital. Those he's are, a, pro- those he's are a rookie. He's a those rookie. are projections. Yeah. But you know what I know? Michael Gallup is freaking good at football. That is that is what I know. So that's what I'm 66 saying. 66 for 1,106 last year in 14 games he on 113 targets. Basically paced production with Amari Cooper, who Amari Cooper is what, a second-round pick? Yeah, we've, we've been saying uh, for quite some time, at least, at least I have, um, that the drafting of CeeDee Lamb, is good for Michael Gallup's value. And this is the show where we put that to the test. And sure. see it because he should and be... And to be clear, you said value, not necessarily production, but value. Exactly. You 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 have 80-plus targets that Jason Witten and Randall Cobb both vacated. That's plenty for CeeDee Lamb to come in, be on the field a lot, be heavily targeted, and not even mm. matter towards Michael Gallup's uh, right. you know, target count from, that he had from last year. So, yes, I think Michael Gallup is a good option this year should be drafted as you know a high end three. Um, That's fair. Or or a low end two. Um, you know I've I've got him at, at twenty eight right now. So um, I think he's going well behind that. I'm, I'm seeing corrections climb in here, Brooks. Yeah. Yes, he's actually our consensus wide receiver twenty six. Okay. I, what yeah. ha- wait, what happened? No, I let me tell what you happened what happened to you. Let, uh, let me tell you what happened because Brooks was trying to be sly and get past this. We pull up this dog. We're we're talking. You two gentlemen are talking, and I see I've got Michael Gallup at forty three. I'm like, no, I do not. I pull up my rankings. I look all. I'm like, this is just flat wrong. What? <laughs> so and then, uh, but Brooks caught it on his own before I messaged him and fixed it. But still. So this is a recent out. still gets caught. This so, is a recent transaction then that you have bumped him up. No, I didn't bump him up. This is where he was from the the moment the UDK. I have no Brooks idea. Brooks just how. screwed up the very first thing he had to do today. <laughs> That's what happened. 
the very first thing he had to do on a which, Monday morning, which, put is, it, which is really just putting in our ranking. And he found it and corrected it on his own before well, we got we talked about e- it. Even still, okay. we got to drive the bus over whenever he's, we get it. He's chance. just trying to submarine Michael Gallup's value so he can draft him. Darn right. All, All right, right. So You're where ridiculous. is he being drafted? Right now, he's being drafted in the seventh round. Uh, eighth pick of the seventh round, wide receiver 33. Our consensus ranking has him at 26, which backs up your point of saying right now Mac- Michael Gallup looks like a value relative to his draft position. Some players, you can kind of see you know, the map. You know that, yeah, his, his draft position is here now, but you kind of know where he's heading. Right. Uh, for instance, a player like CeeDee Lamb might be drafted very, very late right now, but you can kind of foresee if something happens in training camp preseason, early buzz, those players jump up and you can expect it. I don't expect Michael Gallup's average draft position to change at all. I agree. I think this is exactly where he'll be drafted. There are people out there that are hopeful, like us, and people that are scared off by C.D. Lamb. So I, I think that, but if, if C.D. Lamb was not drafted, I think Michael Gallup would be would be being drafted in the l- low teens. I think he would be the new Possible. hotness, and everybody would be all about Gallup. Which and and is I don't insane. Like I, if you're calling for a five round plummet, yeah, I don't know about low teens. I mean, th- this was Amari Cooper narrative. The money being paid, that's still present. He would be where, he, but, but you he, look at Calvin Ridley and the hype that he's yeah, gotten. Yeah, no, it would be similar. Leaving, would be similar. I, I think he would yeah, be right. grouped with him. Yeah, no, you're right. Um. So buy, yes. I what? I so, don't know what the game. <laughs> what is the game? Do we just say, yeah, that's a great ADP? Uh, well, I think we are highlighting the differential in our ranking and where they're going. So, right. for, so at least for Gallup, it represents a value relative to the average draft position. Uh, yeah. As the minions would say, this is illumination. Oh. Quality. Well, well done. Quality Despicable Me reference, yes. Jason. You know, I'm uh, yes, I do to, have children. I'm ashamed to say I've seen none of those. What? I love Michael Keaton. This is insane. Those oh, are really, really, those really good. are so I, good. I know. I know they are. I've seen little bits of them. I've walked through rooms where my kids are watching them, and I've laughed like, uh, doesn't one of them have a guy doing like a, you know, all the Michael Jackson dance moves on oh, a yeah. ship? Oh, that's yeah, that's number three. Yeah. There you go. So I've seen little clips of it, and it looks funny. You got to feel down, like I'm, out, down I'm and, on the outside looking in. Yeah, well, you can, you're allowed in. You're just, yes, you are. <laughs> all you are, are invited. For I'm invited me. <laughs> to watch the movie. Just don't watch Minions. Does that make me despicable? Really? See, I think yeah, Minions is it's good. It's not a it's not a despicable, but it's still fine. All right, so. Uh, Banana. Do we expect the draft <laughs> position to change for Michael Gallup? No. No. Are we willing to draft him where he's being drafted? Yes. A- absolutely. Excited to. That would be that would be fun. All right. <laughs> Rob Gronkowski, uh, Tampa Bay tight end. Rob Gronkowski. So weird. Back with Brady. Now I I haven't looked at this. Where do you think Gronkowski is going right now? If I had to, I'm guessing like uh. top of the sixth round. That's my guess. I, I don't I don't I don't feel confident with where uh what what rounds tight ends are cycled in, but I, I am very confident that Rob Gronkowski is being drafted as a top ten tight end. Okay. So All right. which that's, is that's to, a fair prediction. Which to me is way too high. Mike, do you want to take a shot before I take a look? Uh he, he's a bit tougher. The we're pulling our ADPs from from the best ball tournaments that have been happening because we feel like Best ball is happening. That means people are putting money onto these things. That means they're taking it very serious. It's a good gauge of of existing current value because, right. like you said, it's you know it's, something's on the line. It's not a free draft that people are going in and that maybe they take goofing free, around and free, trying different yes. strategies and yeah. There's, there's money on the line here, so I I think it may have taken a little bit for Gronk's actual ADP to really climb up and solidify. But I tend to agree with Jason. He's going to be at one of those mid round. Tight ends, which is that's high danger because those tight ends just never work out. I I would imagine he's going late five, early six is right. where I would project. He's going in the eighth round, but he is the okay. tight end nine off the board. Oh, that's interesting. And so, if the actual ADP is is a little behind because of the recent signing right. and the buzz and the the hype around Tampa, maybe that rises a little bit. Tight end nine overall, 
middle of the eighth round. Look, I can see why you start to get the itch. Because that name, that's a big name. It's got a lot of letters. A lot of letters. Yeah. A lot of consonants. <clears throat> but none of us have him ranked there. Right. None of them have us rank have him ranked as the top ten tight end for the year, which is tough. And Jay, you're you are by far the lowest on Rob Gronkowski. What what is your biggest red flag uh, I th- for drafting him? I think it's a combination of two <clears throat> things. One, it's the fact that it's been a long time. Since, since Rob Gronkowski was actually really good on the NFL field. Even before he retired, he was not valuable for fantasy. Right. Now, maybe he got all healed up. That's great. But you combine that with the fact that, you know, it is, it's come out that it's going to be Bruce Arians' system, but they're going to learn from, from Brady. And Bruce Arians' system, as we saw with O.J. Howard, it just doesn't involve tight ends that much. I just think the combination of new system that doesn't focus on tight ends combined with I think we're overhyping the name and what Gronk did five, six, seven seasons ago when he was the most dominant guy in the league. In 2017, he was the number two. Yeah, 2017 was the last Tight end in 14 games. So he was dominating. Okay, so three years ago. Thank you. But also he was dominating five, six, seven. I'm not saying he wasn't. But my point is, um, I I don't. I was still correct. I was still correct. (laughs) I think we are drafting him based on his dominant run. Um, th- that being said, I think uh, you weaseled out pretty well. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just a risk that I don't personally want to take, but I don't blame anyone for taking him there because well, look at the tight ends that are like I look at my own rankings. Don't make me look at them. I know. I look at my own rankings and I'm like, okay, who do I have at like tight end ten? Well, I've got T.J. Hawkinson at eleven. <clears throat> You know, uh, T- who do you want, T.J. Hawkinson or Gronk? I don't care between those two. If you want to, if you want to take the shot at Gronk, go for it. But if you I'm, don't, if you don't care, then why would you take either of them? Well, because you have to take a tight end eventually. <laughs> <laughs> That's I understand why. that, but if it eventually is not eighth round. No, 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 certainly not. I mean, when I look at some of my tight ends that I've got, um, you know, in my tight end, uh, in in my top. 10 top 12 I think those guys will be some of those will be in the 12th 13th round the Gronkowski pick to me it, it you know the name value where he's going to go it comes down to do you believe that you really have upside with Rob Gronkowski or are you drafting a better version of Kyle Rudolph a touchdown dependent uh sharing the tight end snaps situation right. that's where I tend to think Gronk is now that still makes him to me a top twelve tight end, but that's not saying much for no. the position. And if Gronk's best days are behind him, and you're drafting him without an upside, and you're just hoping for a touchdown, that's just not a, a as exciting a place to be, in my opinion, than um, going with the upside type of tight ends, the Herndons or the the Fant or Gesicki's or uh, if you if you can get all three of those guys later than you can get Gronkowski. And they have maybe a higher ceiling at this stage in their career than Gronk has. That's where the decision comes to me. Yeah, I mean, we've we've obviously been doing this a long, long time. And my experience has shown me that when you combine a bunch of question marks with a really big name, that I'm I'm always gonna bet on the being overhyped. Rob Gronkowski has a huge, tremendous name value for fantasy players. And when all those question marks are attached to him we haven't seen him in a while the injuries that he had before going the new team the new system um he will be overdrafted a couple quick questions on Gronk before we move on uh so would you take him at this spot no. since it's the eighth round not the sixth like we said I won't <clears throat> no I okay, will not. N- neither will I and then do you expect that draft position to change before the season very much with Gronk yeah if, if it'll the- it'll go up when when the casual players start drafting in August, they're going to see Gronk is back. I'm in Gronk is back with Brady. I'm going to draft him. If let, So let me put we'll it this way. We'll get some hype videos out there of Gronk and Brady. <laughs> oh, certainly. <laughs> so, Jay, if Gronk, in, in some drafts, though, in some drafts, I believe, Gronk will be a later round tight end. If you can get him after, like, the 10th round, would you prefer to take the shot on him? Because we have seen a ceiling from him or do you want to go with one of these up and coming tight ends who you're not 
sure that they can actually get that output. Uh, if I'm in the 10th round and, and the 12th round, let's say, and I can pick between all of those upside options and Gronk, I would probably go with one of the upside options. Okay. I, I think that the target volume for a for a Fant or Hawkinson has a higher opportunity. So um, ADP is just is doesn't matter for you a, on Gronk. Yeah, you just don't want to draft. Yeah, him. and now all that changes if the Buccaneers make a move and and actually trade uh, OJ Howard, which right. I still think is in the cards. Um, but you know that's part of my Gronk statting out is the fact that there are three quality tight ends there it's not going to just be the Gronk show I don't know if uh, I mean this is just pure it's, it's interesting but Matthew Berry did tweet a comparison of George Kittle's rookie year and Noah Fant's rookie year did you guys see that I did I did yeah, not and, uh, George Kittle's rookie year 43 catches on 63 targets 515 yards two touchdowns 359 routes run Noah Fant's rookie year 40 catches on 63 targets 562 yards three touchdowns on 349 routes run. So very similar utilization, uh, amount of routes in the system. We knew Fant coming in would be a pass catching back. Right. But, tight end. Um, or, yeah, pass and, catching tight end. But when you look at kind of the optimism surrounding the Denver offseason and the Denver offense improving, it's one of the reasons I look at Fant and say, sure. uh, you know, I'm not predicting Kittle, but it could well, be good. There are just, there's not many tight ends that can actually score a 75 yard no. touchdown. Like, OJ Howard is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were good days. Hey, before we move on to the other players, checking their price tags. Father's Day is coming up. Oh, you're going to talk meat. Well, I, I am going to oh, talk meat, man. but I'm also going to remind people that Father's Day is coming up in this world of bl fully blurred calendars. Yeah. Yes, Father's Day uh, is still here somewhere. It's April 43rd. Exactly. That is correct. <laughs> right around the corner. And celebrate Pops with Omaha Steaks. Omaha Steaks has a variety of Father's Day packages that include world-famous steaks, Burgers, Franks, sausages, perfect for grilling, premium poultry and pork, side dishes, one-step family meals, desserts, so much more. Tell me how to do this because I'm legitimately going to order my dad this box right now. <laughs> okay, okay. well, we will get to that. I just wanted to remind okay. people, recently I got a giant cooler full of hamburgers from Omaha State, <laughs> and it was a great moment. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, it was a bright, bright star. It, it was. Uh, yeah, this happened a couple weeks ago, and it was like this. This is incredible. No, no joke. I was, I was grilling, uh, to, uh, like four or five days ago, right? And I had more people than I had my Omaha steak burgers, but I had other burgers. And I'm telling you, when I put those on the grill next to each other, it's like <laughs> we're gonna need to cover these with cheese because the the other ones looked so. I just put this so this awful. package in my shopping cart. It, it, the name of the package is Dad's Want Steak. That is that is accurate. <laughs> so right now, Oma Steaks is offering our listeners access to a variety of amazing packages that are perfect to send dad for Father's Day. Go to omahasteaks.com, enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar. You'll see all the great options available, many that include free shipping and a free one-pound package of their perfectly cured, incredibly thick, applewood-smoked, steak-cut bacon. <laughs> What? I believe what? I can what is, That's amazing. There are many packages available that are perfect for dad. They're all ready to be shipped straight to his door in time for Father's Day. Visit omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar to shop for Father's Day today. All right, let's talk about Tevin Coleman. Oh, is that so like the, the horns? I don't know if the song matches my enthusiasm about Tevin Coleman. Yeah. <laughs> I think the song matches my enthusiasm for the song. Uh, you know what I mean? Like the horns were not for Coleman. It was more for the song. Okay. Well, last year, Tevin Coleman, weeks 5 through 12, averaged 14 rushes, three targets a game. Weeks 13 through 17, the most dirt weeks, mm. he averaged 4.4 .4 rushes, less than a target a game. I've listened to head coach Kyle Shanahan come out and talk about this offense, we don't have Matt Burita in the backfield anymore. Raheem Mostert, Tevin Coleman, talking about Coleman's ADP right now, but he's, he talks about this backfield. He doesn't care about who's physically on the field to start, quote-unquote, start the game, the starting running back. He could care less. We saw well, You know who cares, Kyle Shanahan? We do. We <laughs> need to know these things. Get out of here with your nominal starter nonsense. Yeah, yeah. so we do know that he's willing to ride the hot, hot hand. Yeah. Uh, Raheem Moster was paid monies, dollars. And he was? He was. Yeah, he was. And uh, they also 
you know, the, he says he's gaining 10 pounds for more carries, maybe 200 carries. That's not good. But Tevin Coleman is sitting here. Where do you think he is going? Right now, he's our consensus 33 at the running back position. We've all got him pretty similar. I would I would assume <laughs> that he is being drafted ahead of where we have him. I would assume he is like running back 30. I don't think anyone knows what to make of Tevin Coleman. Well, l- listen to this. And and here's the thing. When when we whenever we reveal this average draft position, I'm going to say that it's okay to draft him there. Because you're uh, he's not being drafted as a top guy. But he has the opportunity and the ability and the system to perform if Shanahan chooses to make him the, the, the first of the timeshare. I mean, from weeks 5 through 12 last year, and, and keep in mind, he came out, got injured week 1, and got back in week 5. So this sure. isn't some arbitrary. This is starting in week 5 when he got back all the way until uh, Colonel Mustard dominated and was given the reins at the end of the season. Tevin Coleman, through that stretch, was the running back eight. So the upside is there. I know that 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 kind of seems crazy, but he had just a lot of consistency. Um, well, and that, and that that might make him a can start, not a must start. Oh, yeah. I think that's I think Whoa. that's what Coleman is. Coleman is he's definitely a can not a start. He's a can start. Now, to be clear, that most of money was it was last spring that he got paid. Yes, it was a three year okay. contract yeah, last yeah. spring, not new money, Mike. Okay, but um, he's under contract. Showed up at the end of the season. Coleman right now is going further than where we have him ranked. Oh, okay. He's going in the ninth round. The running back. Like I said, no one knows what to do. The with running Tevin back Coleman. forty-one. But but is that a is that a signal of sorts to the external confidence in Mostert? I think it's uh, yeah. It, it, you could look at it that way. That is confidence in Mostert, and it's also looking at the final how many uh, eight games or so. Of of the of the season for Tevin Coleman, I know he he had the playoff game where he came out and he crushed out of nowhere, but besides that, it was really really bad. It was everything was going there to is, Mostert. There is the injury history with Coleman too. Yes, sure. So and we saw it at the beginning of last year. I think he missed. Uh, Raheem Mostert also has yeah. some injury history. Lo- yeah, Raheem Mostert. I mean, there's a reason he's putting more pounds on his body because he's worried about he's got those Omaha steaks yeah I, so I, I just I just you can, pull strap, you can strap those on his pads <laughs> I am also adding 10 pounds <laughs> um getting ready to watch football <laughs> right I don't want to be injured this year no, watching you've football, got to so protect I'm yourself putting on mass yeah um so I just pulled up the 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 ADP now that we have had it revealed and listen to this four pack of running backs that are going running backs 40 through 43. It's Tariq Cohen, Philip Lindsay, Tevin Coleman, and Matt Burita. Now, only one of them. Mike's face went Only oh. one of those guys has, yeah. Adam the sh- has the chance to be the starter week one, right? I mean, no, nobody else in that group could actually be the starter week one, and only yeah. one of those guys is on a prolific rushing offense. So to me, this is – I I look at Tevin Coleman like a guy I don't want this year. But for where he's going, well, let me the ask you: Do you want him there? Around. Do you want him in the ninth round? Yeah, I yeah, would. I do. Yeah, I would. And Andy does not. I'm thinking. You're I'm thinking. I think I would. Long. I mean, look, yeah, ninth round. You take your shot at having a running back that matters. There, it's not fun to try to find ones that matter when you when you're on the waiver wire. Well, here, so, right. let, let me read running backs behind him, and you guys chime in when you say that's the guy I would rather have as my late round ooh, running back. Okay, Matt Breida. Latavius Murray, uh, no. Daryl Henderson. I'm sorry, Darnell Anderson. <laughs> no, I'm either uh, both names. No, Alexander Madison. No, Tony Pollard. No, Duke no. Johnson. No, Boston Scott, Devonta Freeman, Justin Jackson. You see the point. Well, I, I There's think, no I think others. Murray. Murray's the only one that you look at and you say you know he's going to have carries in a good offense. And it's he's a got similar situation. Great upside he's as a, a handcuff. Exactly. But I mean, we know what Tevin Coleman has been and will be. He's not going to be a top 12 running back. Not over the course of the year. It's not going to happen. I agree. But, but he could be on a week-to-week basis if you catch the right week. Yeah, and, and my point is that he could be the week one lead yes. starter. Yes, which Murray won't be. There's yeah. no one else. He is the last potential week one starter, according to Fantasy ADP. Sure. So I'm in. All right, let's talk about Cortland Sutton, he's our consensus number 25 overall wide receiver. 
Oh, I can guarantee he's being overdrafted where we have him. I can yeah, last year he finished at wide receiver 19, 16 games, 72 for 1,106. We know. We've seen the highlights. Very he's bad a, end of the year. A beast. Uh, one of the things that, that happened in Denver once – Sutton got going as teams realized they didn't have to guard anybody but Cortland Sutton. Uh, it's one of the reasons I think Fant had some decent games at the very end of the year is Sutton was getting shut down. But teams can't do that this year. That's kind of where I'm going. Okay. I'm going with the fact that the drafting of, of Jerry Judy is pretty important to the success of Cortland Sutton, uh, perhaps in the same way that you need – a healthy Deontay Johnson evolution for Juju to be relevant. You know, right. you you need more than one guy so that you can't be shut down and, and the only focus in an offense. We've got him at twenty five. Where do you think he's going? He's 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 probably near a top fifteen wide receiver. I, I there's a lot of hype for a guy who is, uh, you know, he 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 was drafted to be a star last year. He did everything in his power to show that he is for real. And I believe he is absolutely for real. Like, you don't make some of those highlight catches. However, there are so many question marks. There's a reason that I've got him down in, in my 20s. But I think that the usually when there is a, a medium breakout on a wide receiver that new, of a young one, the next year, his ADP is you've got to you've got to buy in and go all in to get him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's at 501. So he's, okay. he's the wide receiver 17 off the board. So well above where our consensus has him. Probably, I like the the phrasing that you just brought up, Jason, which was medium breakout. He had kind of a medium breakout, which is the kind of breakout you have on a team that's not necessarily fun to watch. That starts all year with long. Joe Flacco. That starts with Joe Flacco. Exactly. Um, talent is there. For sure. Uh, variables are there in the consistent play of Drew Locke, in the way that the end of the year function for Sutton and, and him existing as that wide receiver one with Jerry Judy and company. I think this team will run the football quite a bit. Um, uh, do you, <sighs> since we have him below there, are you going to spend the first pick of the fifth round on Cortland Sutton? Are you going to look elsewhere? I probably am not. Uh, I, I feel like my ranking is too low for Cortland Sutton. Just, in given the range of outcomes, given that he was a 1100 yard receiver last year, it's just very difficult to buy into Drew Locke production. I mean, it, he, Drew Locke is surrounded by weapons, but Drew Drew Locke's product he, he was four and one as a quarterback. He won four out of the five games that he started. He must be great, and he he failed to break 200 yards in three of those games. That's not a lot. Uh, one of those games was 208 yards. He, Ooh, did, he broke it though. Yeah, he, he smashed it. His big game was against Houston, 309 and three, which at that point Houston was just hemorrhaging points to the quarterback Houston, position. But we have a problem. Yeah, <laughs> you're on fire I'm today, just, Jason. I'm just here for the quick, witty comments. That's it. <laughs> no one saw that coming. Yeah. Uh, but th that's what I mean. Like 200 yards. That that seemed to be his baseline. Can that it, can that really improve over well, the course of the season? It can certainly improve. Um, well, you know, I know that, it can improve because 200 <laughs> yards is really low. Yes, but obviously, will he, it? He had five starts, you know, and those are his his first five starts in his career. So, you know, you usually look at any rookie going into his second year at quarterback, saying things are going to get better, not worse, as the game slows down for yeah for Baker, <laughs> right? But it doesn't always happen. Drew Locke is the reason I've got Cortland Sutton low because while I do think 17, it, 17 is too high. It's too high. I agree. It, it, it is too high. It, that's not to say he can't beat it, but now Noah Fant is coming into his second year. They draft Jerry Judy. You have a giant question mark. They got Drew Melvin Locke. Gordon out of the backfield. You've got, you've got other weapons there. I mean, you look at uh, Cortland Sutton had six games last year where, you know, he was outside that, that top 36 wide receiver. Four of those six came in the five starts with Drew Locke. Oh, don't say now, that. Now, it's a small sample, so you're, we're not going to extrapolate from a five-game uh, data set. But if set. you were it, to extrapolate, that's the only set you can <laughs> extrapolate yeah, from. Yes, the only thing we can look at is the five <laughs> games that we have. But, um, you know, so it, it, it's he's just – he's not guaranteed to take that next step. There's probably guys going behind him that I would prefer over him, like a Calvin Ridley – a Robert Woods. Good, play the same game. Oh, what yeah. wide receivers are going around the area of Cortland Sutton? All right. So, uh, A.J. Brown, 
is the wide receiver being drafted one spot ahead of Cortland Sutton. Okay, yeah, now it's appropriately. Easy. Yeah, yeah, I would rather have AJ Brown. Keenan Allen right after Cortland Sutton. Okay, he's a he's a he's a tough That's one. That's tough. Uh, Calvin Ridley and Robert Woods are right after both them. of I would, whom I would much prefer over Sutton. I would as well. Yeah, uh, Devontae Parker. DK Metcalf, Stephon Diggs. That's where he belongs. Yeah, in that group. That's the range. Yep. Yeah. So uh, you know, and and that means to me that uh, guys like Ridley and Woods are going to be a better value and land on more of my yeah. teams than right. than Sutton. And again, this is a price check. It's not a talent indictment. Cortland Sutton is a great wide receiver. Broke the most tackles amongst all wide receivers in football last year. Oh, he's so good. There's there's a good and a bad when you see the kind of crazy highlights he had last year. It's good because it says this player can dominate, but you only get to make crazy highlights when there's bad balls being thrown your way. You know, yeah. you don't and you're not open. If huh? right, you're 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 covered and the ball is barely catchable. Then you can make a cool highlight, but that's not what you want to bank on. He finished four of the last 5 weeks. At the wide receiver position, 71st, 52nd, or I'm sorry, 56th, 41st, 51st, 45th. And those are the that, games that's Drew five, was starting. That's five games that you, yeah, can't, you can't start him. That's painful. So that just shows you, you know, the difference between an upper echelon top tier wide receiver is what are you guaranteed to get every week? Mm -hmm. And Sutton is not in the guarantee category. That's why we have him a little lower than ADP. Let's talk about Drew Brees. I think this one's fun to Drew discuss. Brees. Drew Brees is. What are, you, what are you cackling about over there? I'm just super excited. You got about another Drew Brees. sweet movie reference? Oh, then I, it's locked and loaded. Just, w just you wait. <laughs> just you wait. <laughs> no, that, that's jumping, John. Oh, you I, can't go to movies. To, to, to this theater. is not, This is not on me. You yeah, go but, check but, the but film. But July, July third, I think that hits in the movie category. So then all yeah, of a sudden he's. You go check the film. I just said it. I look over and Andy gave me the eyes like. Yeah, we were all thinking it, Jason. <laughs> well, Sometimes you don't it. say what you're thinking, <laughs> dude. I, I would be so much better off if I did not always say what I was thinking. <laughs> this is just a fact of life, but this is me. All right. For better or worse, this is me. That's the letter your wife wrote you yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it would be better. No. Uh, we have him at the consensus quarterback six. Uh, very enthusiastic about Drew Brees' prospects this year. Not really thrown off by the age. I am curious where he's going in best ball leagues right now. Yeah, that's that that's an interesting one because uh, best ball you know these these are uh people primarily that are are thinking their their head is in the game. They they follow, they track this. The age um could I'm going to guess it's right where we have him. I'm going to guess he's going as the quarterback 6 off the board and that would be what? The 8th round, 7th <laughs> round. Yeah, I'm going to say quarterback eight. I think he's okay. going a little lower. And I and I mean, I've got him as my quarterback four. So I'm I'm apparently all in on Drew Brees this year. Mike, where do you think he's going? I'm going to reveal. Uh, yeah, I can't disagree. I'm over here trying to figure out. Uh, he just like he had a great year, and he was averaging you know 271 passing yards per game. And and I'm in on Drew Brees as well. I'm just trying to craft the narrative of. Can it not work? And it, it very easily could not work. It, it all comes down to those touchdowns where the last three years he averaged 270 yards a game, 266 yards a game, 270 yards a game. The, the biggest difference was in touchdowns. Can he sustain that touchdown rate? Well, he's, he's going lower than where we have it. He's the quarterback 10 off the oh, board. Oh, okay. Ninth round pick, middle of the ninth round, Drew Brees sitting at QB 10. I'm all about that. I think I will, t I, I, I will take that. <laughs> if I can grab my quarterback four as the quarterback 10 off the board, a guy who uh, I think is going to actively be trying to break records this season, a guy who has his best wide receiving core now that they've added Emmanuel Sanders and Jared Cook, uh, you know, is fully integrated. Uh, of course, can't guard Mike is always there. I, you know, this is the, the opportunity for Drew Brees to go out on a super high note is there. And if he's the 10th quarterback off the board, I'm well, all in. I think you know we've we've talked a lot about the upside of of Tom Brady and but the risk you know and and Drew Brees is in that age category where uh, this team has the maybe unlike Tampa this team does have the ability to take the pressure off of Drew Brees if they want to with Alvin Kamara with Latavius Murray with sure. what they can do in the running game and if, their defense and their defense and so if the team is if Brees is not 
the breeze of old, they have the ability to pivot a little bit. And, you, you know, when it ends, it ends. Not seeing it happening for Drew Brees at 41, but, you know, especially with the average depth of target and where he carves defenses up. That being said, it's still one of the risk factors for Drew Brees. You also, I think, you know, you're going to get less of the weak winning type of performances sure. from Drew Brees. He's, that's, and that's been he's the problem. steady, but he's not going to Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes you a week. We, we had... I don't remember if it was last off season. Was that the I think it might the, have been the, the year two of, years ago where uh, he was like the quarterback twelve, but every week you didn't actually want right. to play him. And then we had the giant off season of I like I felt like the only Drew Brees, the, the the only person on Team Drew Brees. So this is it's strange. It's it's strange that I'm like half in, half out, and now Jason is fully in. Yeah, I mean, last year you saw the pendulum swing from the right. 18 total touchdowns from Elvin Kamara on the ground to, you know, them barely running yep. the ball into the end zone. So, but at QB 10, seems pretty nice yeah, that, I'm with fine. the upside. I'm, I'm, yeah, I wouldn't draft. feel good going You know, there. it's like I've got Drew Brees as my quarterback four, but I'm not drafting the fourth quarterback off the board ever. So, this is just where I, this wow. is where QB I'm happy. Four that he drops to 10 so that I can draft him and take that shot. Okay. All right. Hey, Brooks, this is fun. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you should take some more names, and we should do this again very soon. I want to get into the mailbag now, answer some questions mm. from the Foot Clan. But, uh, you know, other than that first one, Brooks, really good job. <laughs> really, really good job. Thank you. Yeah. Mailbag. Mailbag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, all right, let's answer some questions from the Foot Clan. If you have a question for us, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the Submit a Question button, or you can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We do have some voicemails in there. Let's uh, let's hit one. Hey, ballers, this is Paul from Northern Ireland. Oh, Just bonjour. kidding. I'm actually from Chicago. Oh, uh, you my question is, rat. Uh, of all the rookie wide receivers, which one do you think has the best year in 2020 in half PPR leagues? Thanks, guys. Keep up the great work. Uh, half PPR, best season. I think that... I mean, you obviously can go a number of directions. I, I am finding myself more and more in the year one camp of Michael Pittman Jr. Ooh, okay. I don't know if that's the right answer, but that's uh, my answer. I, I love Michael Pittman Jr. for value because he's not going to be the, the rookie wide receiver people are targeting. I tend to think Jerry Judy. You know, we talk about Cortland Sutton yeah. being a little too high. Part of the reason is is Jerry Judy. He has an opportunity to come in and get 100 targets, and he has the talent sure. to take screens to the house. Um, the, the combination of, you know, this is a guy who for years, uh, you know, how long have I been talking about Judge Judy, Mike, uh, sure. in the in the, in the At office? least eight years. Even before this <laughs> wide receiver came out. Uh, so you know, I <laughs> he loves I, the show. I think that uh, I think Jerry Judy would be the guy I would put the highest odds on at finishing as the wide receiver one from this year's rookie class. And for do me, you have Jerry Judy's ADP on you, Jason, for best ball? I can get that, it. That can be sometimes. That's one of the reasons why the Sutton pick is not going to happen for my team. If I think those two guys target wise are going to be similar, and one of them's like, right. Well, let me guess. He's the wide receiver forty one. So okay, well overall, that's not as far down as I thought. Hundred and tenth uh, player off the board overall, sandwiched between John Brown and Emmanuel Sanders. I will take okay. the upside of Jerry Judy there. I of these rookies for this year, I would go with Jalen Rager from the Philadelphia Eagles, sure. especially with all of this, uh, out Al, like the Alshon talk of maybe he's not even ready to go at the beginning of the season, which would thrust Jalen Rager right into the starting lineup. I'm so tired of Alshon's injuries. <laughs> I think worry. I think he's pretty tired of them too. Is he though? I think we're going to be done talking about those injuries after this season. Very possible. I just have like injured list fatigue with Alshon. I just it, it even when he cuz what? The Super Bowl game. You remember the shoulder injury? Mm -hmm. The Super Bowl game. And then you just talk about never 100% even when he, you thought he was 100%, he wasn't 100%. He's never quite... You can never have any confidence, even going back to Chicago. Anyway, sorry. All right, moving on. Let's uh, do another voicemail. Hey, name's Brandon from Kentucky. Uh, I made a trade in my Dynasty League for Saquon Barkley. I gave up Derrick Henry, 
and 1.01 in rookie draft. All I want to know is, am I an idiot? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Well, I don't. I don't know if we will will label you as such. I. I don't. I don't think it's an idiotic move. I believe Saquon Barkley is worth more than Clyde edwards hilaire or Derrick Henry individually. Um. So in your single roster spot, you're going to get more points. Um. I think Saquon I would, will be relevant a lot longer than Derrick Henry will be for sure. Derrick Henry's getting up there in age. Um. And who knows? You know, he's he's not under a long term contract as of yet. Right. Um, I would probably rather have the combo of Henry and Clyde Edwards Alaire. Um, this is what you have to do to get Saquon. Yes, you got to pay up if you're going to get him from in a dynasty league from the owner of Saquon. This is pretty much the kind of offer you have to make. Yeah, I would go with the the combo though. But mm. I don't I don't think he's an idiot. I don't think this is no. a, a you know sometimes we get trades. I think we had one on the footcast the other day that we. We graded, unfortunately, like a D minus. I think you gave it an F plus. I did. Like, um, this is not one of those. Do they fire teachers instantly for the F plus if they throw that on somebody's? <laughs> oh, man. What a brutal. If they put the plus, the plus? on the yeah. F, like you <sighs> did mean, terrible. You guys are you're missing the reference. I am. Agreed. F plus. Click. Moving on. All right. We'll let the Foot Clan who knows what Mike's talking about respond to that. I'm very disappointed in you, Jason. Uh, by the way, I, I actually, if I have a team that has some depth at running back, I do this deal. I make this trade. I try to get Saquon. Gotcha. And that's what it comes down to to me. If you if you needed more depth at running back, then it's you know the inverse. But Yeah, it's tenacious D. Well, I had to look it up. I oh. have to admit the truth, and I am disappointed in myself. Mike. Any you. other producers know the reference when it happened? Oh, okay, Jeremy knows it for sure. Al Borland threw his hand up. Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. I'm sorry, Mike. It's it, look. It's, it's Un- that's not a me problem. Uncultured that's a you problem. No, no, I, I, have, I have let a lot of people down here today. <laughs> Instagram question. It's simple. It's from Isaiah. What is the best quarterback scoring format? I I prefer six point uh, per passing touchdown. Um, if I could, of course, I would love to have the rushing yardage for uh, quarterbacks be the same as their passing yardage uh, we are in the minority there but uh I, I you know that's that's how i see it yeah i like i like the six point for the for the quarterback but the uh the question is jason is it is it uh 25 yards per one point for passing yards yes and 25 rushing yards per one point yes <laughs> yes that's that's and and the nice thing is uh nobody agrees with us mike but, you know, put it this way. R- mobile quarterbacks, rushing quarterbacks are known widely in the fantasy community as the cheat code, right? Right. What does that say? Like, if it's a <laughs> cheat code, if it's a cheat, that means like, oh, this is kind of broken. Exploit it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all about cheating to win when it's legal here. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, this, find this the, is che- the system. I, I had the, the game shark. I had the game genie. I am all about that life. So take advantage of it for sure. However, um, it, you can fix broken things too. That's, you know, uh, you know, when it was standard scoring and you didn't have full PPR, we fixed it. Right. Um, so that's what I would say. You would say, fix it. Fix, say, it. fix it. All Step right. one, identify the problem. Yes. Um, let's go to this Instagram question here. What made you guys start a podcast? <laughs> oh, it's I simple. Had, well, I had so many things to say. Well, what made you guys start the podcast was a love for our league of record. Yeah. And a love for talking trash and a love for hearing your own voices. And I'm just mm, talking yeah. to you two because you guys started the, the, the original podcast just for our league. For the twelve people in the league, yeah, to- we we carved you out of that one, Jay, because we wanted you to be more of the subject matter right. of the podcast. Oh, we wanted to be able to talk about what you were doing wrong. I wanted to be the subject matter <laughs> of that podcast. I would make trades and be so upset if I didn't get the trade of Soros Rex on the podcast that week. I'd be like, my trade was awesome. Yeah, you got to. I mean, I've since we've had this podcast going for the last you know five plus years. I've heard from several Foot Clan members that have done that, have, have spun up a once yeah. a week. Maybe it's in season. It's once a week. You do a little show or a podcast or a video show. And, you know, 
it's a fun it's a fun way to make the league interactive and enjoyable and something to look forward to and give stupid awards away to each other and insult people and then uh you know watch the season take place and be super wrong about what you said and and I wanted to talk about fantasy football and writing is just not my bag. There you go. It's much yeah. easier to just talk about it. We do have a new giveaway right now. We what are, are we giving, giving away, away a signed Devontae Adams jersey. Mm, Ooh, that's hot. He's now a that's, beast. That's the jersey. It's signed. does not come with the 10 to 12 touchdowns he's likely to accumulate this year. But, but you, it does you come like, with a swag. You could wear it. When, you could wear it when he scores touchdowns. Yeah, and it comes with a swag pack as well. It's a free giveaway, FootClanGiveaway.com. You can go and enter. Devontae Adams signed jersey though. That's a good one. It's one of our best. I know Al Borland. Mm. Stay away. Just steer clear there, Cheesehead. Mm. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. And we want to thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring the show. A Michael Gallup signed jersey. On uh, or a signed mini helmet just sold for seventy three dollars and seventy one cents at pristineauction.com. Hundreds of daily auctions. Use our code Ballers, Ballers to get a ten dollar credit. So that's gonna do it for us. We'll be back on Thursday. Enjoy your ultimate draft kit. Please send bugs uh, Brooks's way, not our way. And spiders to Jason. Yeah. No. Goodbye. You will be muted. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter. You will be the muted. FF Ballers. <laughs> Foot Clan, remember, Omaha Steaks delivers guaranteed quality and safety with every order. So send dad a gift of food he'll love this year. Make Father's Day simple. Send dad the gift he really wants. Perfectly aged Omaha Steaks. You can get free shipping and free steak cut bacon with select packages. Visit omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar to see the variety of amazing packages.